today I'm going to talk about my first term at Western Governors University and just briefly talk about the courses that I transferred in prior to my first term at Western Governors University. Um, if you want more in-depth videos on any of these classes that I completed in my first term, you can just watch those on my channel. They're each about like five to ten minutes long, I think. Um, but yeah, just overall my experience for my first term and then maybe some things I'd like to do different in my term that's coming up. So, um, I transferred in a total of 21 credit units to Western Governors University from the previous university that I was at. Um, two of the courses, which I believe were Fundamentals for Success in Business and Integrated Physical Sciences, were classes that I took at Sophia, um, sophia.com. And that was a really good experience. I would recommend um, you don't make the same mistake that I did and try and just do all of your classes through Western Governors. If you can, go to study.com, go to Sophia, take classes that transfer in. It's just a little bit faster, and you can really focus on the more difficult classes when you start at Western Governors University. Okay, so that's enough of that. Um, so now into my first term at Western Governors University. So I completed a total of 46 credit units. Um, orientation is zero, as you can see. It doesn't count for anything, but it still shows up. Uh, there were three classes that I thought were the most difficult for me that I would recommend you watch my videos on and also just kind of go to Reddit and um, the WGU Accelerators group on Facebook and just get tips from people because it's those are some great resources. But those classes that were the most difficult for me were... Um, in no particular order, um, operations and supply chain management, C720, um, project management, C722, and principles of financial and managerial accounting, D196. Uh, these, those three classes were the most difficult because they took the longest amount of time and there's just so much material to cover. Um, so if you are working at a pace of finishing each class in about six weeks, I think that's plenty of time to work through those courses. However, I think, I don't know if this is a thing, but I, at least for me, it's a thing. I think there's, it's really easy to get into a state of mind where you like overstudy for a test and you're just trying to memorize so much information that you aren't really retaining anything, but you are physically in front of a computer or reading a book that you maybe start focusing on things that aren't really important. So for those classes, the ones that are difficult for you, I would just suggest that you go and check what you're actually going to be tested on. And that's typically in the course chatter. It'll tell you what percentage breakdown you're going to be tested on or if it's a performance assessment, what they're looking for. But really look at that stuff and just try to focus on things that are the most important there and and then, re I mean, guide your study appropriately. There's no need to, at least in my opinion, to worry too much about the things that don't make up a big percentage of the final assessment. And I know that probably is like common sense, but based off of what I've seen on Reddit and like Facebook groups, people get really in the weeds and they get so focused on how difficult the class is going to be that they just are really scatterbrained and they focus on too many things instead of very f the very few important things. So just a tip from me, when you are taking a more difficult class and Reddit and Facebook's like, oh my gosh, this class is difficult. Make sure you're working on all these things. Just like take it one day at a time. Take it one hour at a time. Make sure you're taking the quizzes that are inside of the course material that you're given because I think those are a really good gauge of what you can expect on tests. And remember that when PAs and OAs don't align, just get into a state of mind where you feel confident enough with the subjects or the formulas that you don't really need the PA and OA to align. And that's kind of how I approached um, like D196. I was really, really worried about that class because everyone was saying that the PA and OA didn't align, but 
I found that that didn't matter too much because the concepts and the fundamentals that you were tested on were pretty ingrained into my head. So I was able to look at a lot of the scenarios in the questions and figure out what I needed because I just had a really good understanding of the information that I was going to be tested on. I think a lot of people get into a a frame of mind where they're so used to classes maybe being a little bit easier, being able to complete them faster, or the PAs and OAs being super similar that you kind of just forget that that's not what it's really like in the real world. And that's why I think D-196 was difficult because it had a lot of practical application, at least in the OA that I took. And so it was like, oh, here's a real situation and apply this uh, equation so that you can figure out what's going on. And so I felt confident enough that I was like, okay, I know what to do from here. So that's just kind of a tip that I have for the more difficult classes. Um, but I guess the tip for the easier classes like um, C-168 and C-715, I think you should just kind of sit down, bury your head down, and just get the class done because there's a lot of information I don't think you need because it's a lot of common sense. But if you're focusing too much on, like I said, kind of like the weeds, it's easy to get tripped up on the important um, sections that you're going to be tested on. So just really focus and make sure you are studying what you're going to be tested on and not just like studying the things that you maybe think are important because a lot of times that's different from what is actually going to be presented to you on a test. Um, let's see. So for performance-based assessments, uh, I would just recommend sitting down and just knocking out a paper in one sitting because uh, I made the mistake of just kind of constantly reevaluating my papers and trying to make them bigger and better and longer. And while that's not a bad thing, I think you can easily spend more time than what is necessary to um, pass a class. Or if you try and focus too much on making your paper really good and then you get a your paper back saying that it has revisions because maybe you got a little too far into the weeds, it's, it's kind of disappointing and you can get frustrated really, really quickly with that. And honestly, that's kind of how I felt with D081. I spent a lot of time on these papers and the first task I actually got an excellence award for. So I got like a little certificate that said, oh, you did really well. Um, here, you can print this off and congratulations. So that was pretty cool. But um, the second task I had to have revised two separate times because I guess some of my answers were too similar to some of my other answers, so it wasn't like I was making two separate points, but more of like getting really into depth on one point and drawing it out over two questions. So just try and do exactly what the rubric is telling you. I know it's really easy and you can get really excited when you first start and your goal is just to move through um, and do super super great work and then kind of get a little discouraged when you have to do revisions because maybe the work that you are really inclined to do is just opposite of what the revision what the um, evaluator wants so just make sure you're writing to the rubric and do really well when you're writing to the rubric but just just remember that if you're putting in something that they're not asking for there's a chance that they might have you make a revision because it maybe deviates or it isn't answering the question. So that's what I would say there. But if you do really good work, you can get an excellence award. And that was pretty cool. You get a little PDF that you can print off and just say, hey, I did really good on this one task and I have something to show for it. And that's something that you can throw on a resume. Um, you could probably put it on your LinkedIn. Uh, but yeah, those are some tips about those. And also... As far as like LinkedIn is concerned, I'm working on the Bachelor's of Manage IT Management. I probably should have said at the very beginning, but um, you will get mini badges for completing certain courses. Um, so I think if you take Information Technology Essentials, 
and information systems management and I think introduction to spreadsheets you get a little badge that says you are uh, information technology management certified something like that from Western Governors University and it's a badge that you can add to your LinkedIn and it's just another way of showing that hey I taken these classes I know how to do these things and yeah some people are might be looking for that as far as hires um, HR departments are concerned so that's pretty cool um, I also really like that you can take tests at really any time of the night so you know you're a night owl you pit, most people are at Western Governors University because they work full-time and they don't really have time to be at a school or you know just schedules don't align very well with a traditional school so you're here you take tests online I would suggest that when you are taking tests you just be extra prepared make sure there's nothing on your desk when you're taking tests because some of the proctors are very particular and if you have something on your desk they might make you um, open up some drawers because maybe they're concerned that you're going to cheat these are all kind of horror stories that I've heard on Reddit and the Facebook group, but just make sure that you are following all the instructions, clearing off everything so that it can go smoothly and you can just jump right in taking your test. Make sure you have the right camera as well, because if you don't have a camera that can like stand up on itself or is separate from uh, your like laptop or built-in computer camera, they will not let you take a test. So keep that in mind. And yeah, I mean, overall, I think the first term was great for me. I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to the next term. Um, I wasn't trying to accelerate a lot this first term. I was really just happy to be going to a school where I could go at my own pace. But I accelerated with 46 credits. I'm over halfway done with my degree. And so I think this next term, I'm really going to just bury my head down and try and knock the rest of my credits out in this last term hopefully can graduate sometime in august or september maybe make it to the las vegas graduation but western governors university is great i'm really excited for term two i think i'm going to try and prioritize some more time um every single day rather than a few times a week just because a lot of these classes I feel like you have to just be in every single day either doing flashcards or reading the material so that you're not forgetting it by the time that you're going to study again and um, September through February was a a little bit more of a difficult term because you have a lot of the bigger holidays in there so I was ideally thinking that I was going to work through those holidays and just knock out some classes but I ended up taking some breaks because family was in town and you know just other things so I think the March through August time frame will be good for me because there aren't going to be nearly as many holidays and I'll have more time to really just focus on school and knock it out and get it done so yeah I think that's kind of everything that I have for today I tried to make my thumbnail like the Spotify wrapped um look and feel just because I thought it was kind of fun so if you like that let me know I'll try to make some more fun thumbnails not that it matters too much but you know kind of grabs the eye or grabs some attention but yeah thanks for everyone who's been su really supportive and watching the videos and letting me know that they like them or even providing their own insight in the comments because sometimes my insight isn't what people need and it's nice to have another avenue to go and look for people who are pursuing the same degree that you are and the comments have been really helpful I think in providing that extra insight for some people who are wanting to wanting and willing to provide their tips on courses or how they got through it so feel free to re leave comments um, even if it's just with some tips on how to do a little bit better uh, yeah so I will make a video the next for the next class that I pass and I think the first class I'm taking is introduction to sociology so we'll see how that goes and you will see me back hopefully in a couple weeks uh, thanks for watching and i hope you all have a great day